You know, pound for pound, no pun intended, this guy was the best Acadian athlete of his generation. He changed the way we looked at the uh, sport of boxing in New Brunswick and the Maritimes. Uh, he didn't call him the fighting fisherman for nothing. He was a friend of mine in his later years. I had the great opportunity to, to cover some of his guest appearances in the North Shore in uh, the 1990s and in the 2000s, right before he passed away. We can only be talking about one person, the fighting fisherman, the heart of Acadie, uh, the lifeblood of Acadie. We live vicariously through him, and he lives on uh, through us 14 years after his death. Of course, we're talking about the great Yvonne Durrell. Now, Yvonne Durrell came from a family of uh, 14 uh, children. He grew up to a, uh, be a 5'9", 175-pound uh, fighter with every aspect of accuracy that was needed in a pugilist. Now, he grew up in Bay Sedan, which is a beautiful Acadian fishing community on Mirbushi Bay on, uh, the, in the, on the Atlantic Ocean. Now, uh, like many of the others of his generation, he left school at an early age to work uh, as a laborer. He, he worked on a fishing boat. Now, when he sparred his spare time, Durrell liked to box, and while still working in the fishery, he began prize fighting on weekends. Now, he began his professional career in 1948, which was a growing campaign for Canadian fighters. He took part in boxing at various venues around the province of New Brunswick. Now, by August 1950, he only had one defeat in 23 starts, the lone blemish uh, lost by disqualification to Billy Snowball. Now, over time, he was gaining reputation as a tough opponent with a hard punch. He had a large fan following in Chatham, one in Newcastle, as, one, as well as in Franklin. Now, this resulted in a groundswell of popularity throughout the province as his victories eventually made him one of the most top-ranked middleweight fighters in Canada. Now, in May 53, he won the Canadian middleweight uh, championship. That's 160 60 pounds. Now, he defended his title successfully numerous times, winning eight straight bouts. Now, we knew he was going to make a move up to either light heavy or heavyweight, and he did just that. He moved up in weight class uh, to fight at 175. Now, uh, in his first fight against a heavier and stronger opponent, he, def he defeated the then Canadian champion to take the light heavyweight title. Now, the following year, he fought him outside his native Canada for the first time, going to Brooklyn, New York to fight Floyd Patterson, an up-and-coming American Golden Gloves champion. Now, outpointed in eight rounds, been a man who would soon become the heavyweight champion of the world. Durrell's strong performance in a losing effort against Patterson gave him a wide respect in the international boxing world, especially in the pages of Ring Magazine, the Globe and Mail, Sports Illustrated. Uh, they were saying, you know, this Acadian hero was a, kind of a small-town hero. And one uh, American pundit said, this is, the new, this is the Rocky Marciano of Acadia, or the Acadian community. I tend to, I tend to agree. Very, very popular. Couldn't go any place without people... You know, basically wanted to touch him, get his autograph. Now, in New York City in March 57, Durrell broke into the top 10 world rankings with a majority decision over Angelo Defendus. In May, he won the British Empire Light Heavyweight Championship and the following month fought the top rated contender in the world, a fighter my dad called the most underrated boxer regeneration, Tony Anthony. In a fight most experts say he won handily, Durrell was given only a draw against the heavily favored Anthony but elevated him to the number three ranking in the world. He became a much talked about sports personality in New Brunswick and Acadie in Canada, and after he bet the German champion, Willie uh, Besmanov, uh, in 1958, he then defeated Clarence Hinant, regarded by many as the one of the best all-around boxers of the time. The victory provided Durrell with the opportunity for, the first, for his first chance to fight for a world title. Now here, ladies and gentlemen, where he became an international sensation. Now, Yvonne Durrell's light heavyweight championship fight came against the legendary old mongoose, Archie Moore, on December 10th, 1958, at a forum in Montreal, and it's still called a top 10 fight and it's maybe sporting event of all time. It is the one of most uh, memorable fights in boxing history, according to Ring Magazine, and every, every boxing historian that's ever uh, lived over the last 100 years. Now, entering the fight, he was a 4-1 to one underdog, uh, but the bout made Durrell eventually a legend in Canada, gaining him near cult status for his performance. 
In one of the first fights broadcast coast to coast on American tele- television, Durrell stunned boxing patrons by knocking Moore down three times in the first round. Under boxing rules today, except those of the WBC, the fight would have been stopped after three knockdowns in one round, and Durrell would have been world champion. Also, he missed an opportunity when after the first knockdown, he still over more watching for several seconds before returning to this corner. Now, the referee for the fight was former world champion Jack Sharkey, which was known for his mafia connections. I don't think the mafia knew that Dorell would hit more that quick, but Sharkey was not given a, a consistent count on any of the knockout, knockdowns. Now, because of this delay, uh, again, Jack Sharkey had to wait to begin the count. And Moore baited him his feet at the count of nine, but he was down for 14 seconds. Now, Durrell would have likely won if he went to his corner. Now, Durrell swarmed all over the champion for four more rounds and knocked him to the canvas canvas again in round five. But Moore held on and eventually wore Durrell down to retain the world title with an 11th round uh, TKO stoppage. The fight was the talk of the boxing world and members of the game press voted it a sporting event of the year. In an interview in 94, Moore, upon recounting the fight, still hailed as classic, uh, had this to say, as the fight wore on, I got stronger. I thought to myself that this fellow was the toughest man I ever fought. I turned pro in 1936 and fought until 1965, 229 fights, and I still think Dorrell was the toughest man I ever faced. Now, when me and Yvonne uh, became friends, mostly uh, deeper because of his appearances at the Canada Games pre-events, and the Canada Games tournament in uh, in uh, Dalhousie. He told me what happened in that fight. I don't know if he uh, he's probably told the story uh, uh, lots of times. But he said after I knocked him down the third time, he said I got tired because I thought I had him knocked out. And here he said I knocked him down three times. But he said Sharky was just going one, two, three, and it was never it was never indication it was a soft count. But the only thing I compared with when. Uh, Buster Douglas uh, was knocked down by Mike Tyson before the uh, the key knockout that uh, Buster did against uh, Mike later on. It was a slow count. I counted 14, and Darrell said, well, what are you going to do? And that's true. You know, you got to go by the rules that are there. He said he didn't think he did anything intentionally, but he said Moore hit me pretty hard too, like I said. Now, uh, he had a rematch against Archie Moore, but lost a third-round knockout. Now, uh, unfortunately, uh, some negatives did, did happen around that time as well. Uh, six months later, in June 59, at Durrell's home village, a village of Basin Inn, 35 fishermen died when they were swept out to sea by 40-foot tidal waves that pounded the wharf. Now distraught uh, by the loss of his friends and relatives, he entered that Moore fight uh, not 100%, and of course, Moore being the ultimate uh, you know, uh, taking advantage of a key situation. And Durrell said himself, he said, uh, you know, I wasn't ready for that fight. It's true, too. You lose your friends and relatives like that. It's hard in the system. Now, uh, in November of that year, he eventually lost in 12 rounds to the Canadian heavyweight champion, the, the, the future star George Travallo. Now, Durrell fought only a few more times before taking up pro wrestling in 1961. He returned to boxing in 63, winning twice before retiring uh, permanently. He continued to earn a living in wrestling, primarily in eastern Canada, but on occasion with Stuart's Stampede Wrestling in Calgary. Now, uh, here's where the Doral path in life gets a little bit different. And bear with me because it's you could do a whole podcast on what happened next. Now, despite his size and brutal profession, he's also often re- he was often referred to as a modest and gentle man. His nickname was Do, which meant soft or easy going. However, in 1970s, an event profoundly impacted him and his family and the province when in a bar that he owned and operated he shot and killed a man who had attacked him charged with murder he was defended by a young lawyer by the name of frank mckenna and it was eventually acquitted on the grounds of self-defense the trial eventually received massive and sustained publicity and when mckenna ran for the liberal party leadership he uh, became premier in 1987 in a 58 to nothing shutout of the PCs led by Richard Hatfield. So I think Frank McKenna defending the god of Acadie had a small part to play in that 58 nothing destruction of the PC party. So, you know, he was impacting politics indirectly because when the guy that defends you 
becomes the biggest leader in Canada on a provincial stage, you know, you, you see how the public would react. Now, when he re retired to uh, his hometown, a small museum and souvenirs of his 20-year boxing career was built attached to his home where he and his wife of more than 50 years uh, greeted fans who still showed up to see him. In an article for ESPN.com about the most memorable matches in boxing history, current day referee the late Bills Lane said, I don't think you'll ever see a fight like Darrell Moore again. That fight transcended what great fights are. Now, if you have a chance to watch the fight, I think it's still available full on YouTube. It's been remastered. My God, what an exciting fight. There's no words to describe it. You have to watch that to believe it. It's like Canada was flowing through him and Acadie was flowing through him. It would hit the rail. It was everybody in Canada saying, aha, uh -huh, Canadians, Acadians were tough. Take this shit and, you know, deal with it. You know, it would just come. And that led to the, what they call the superstar era. Because no more Darrell fight would have never been the hype you were seeing for Liston and Ali and uh, later on Duran, Hearns, Hagler and Leonard. You know, the, the hype in boxing, uh, TV made boxing, but... Darrell Moore made pay-per-view, as we say. Now, unfortunately, uh, a few years after uh, we became friends, he was having some physical problems, and unfortunately, on Christmas Day 2006, he took a stroke and died almost two weeks later on January 26, uh, 2007, uh, at age 77. Uh, he had been suffering from Parkinson's for a number of years, and uh, when he uh, had these... Uh, Funeral on January 11, 2007, from the St. Anne uh, Roman Catholic Church in Bay St. Anne. Every person in the province, including myself, took a took a second to think about what Ivan meant to us. And well, let me tell you my my biggest story about Ivan Durrell. We're enjoying a coffee before uh, there was, I think, some prelims were starting. He said, uh, Jeffrey. He said, Let me show you something. I said, What do you mean? He said, Watch me. He walked away and he walked into a crowd about 200 fans and he held his hands out like Jesus touching, you know, the afflicted. He looked around and he winked at me. Can you imagine? He said, look, look, he said, everybody wants to touch me. Because he knew, he knew how much everybody loved him. And we loved him. He had his faults, obviously, because every Acadian like me has, uh, has faults. You know, he, uh, he did so much with he took the burdens of, of the poverty of the Acadians and the poverty of New Brunswick and uh, like that song, the weight, take take a load off and put the weight on me. Now, talking about his career, <coughs> 87, 24, and 2 in one no contest, 48 knockouts, uh, 24 losses, 9 by knockout, and 2 draws. And uh, his uh, opponents have been uh, just a who's who of boxing and wrestling, again, Fought, uh, fought uh, young Bojack, George Chavallo, uh, Floyd Patterson, Archie Moore, the great Emil Dupre uh, wrestler when he went pro for a short uh, short while. The the fight against Mike Holt where he split uh, him pretty well open from the rectum and he almost bled to death. Uh, Tony Anthony, of course. Willie uh, Besmanoff. Uh, uh, Gordon Wallace, who was a, uh, uh, a good prospect back in the day. Uh, you know, Clarence Anat, you know, very underrated fighter. Uh, Yolanda Pompey, uh, we, he a uh, very, very talented fighter. He fought in London, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the fight against Patterson, like I said, he also, uh, 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 it, was, it was also a very interesting indication that uh, Patterson, he fought him in a rematch, is what I'm saying, in, uh, in Newcastle. And I wish there were some tapes, of that to see that but the the gordon wallace situation he fought gordon several times in glaze bay uh you know uh in moncton uh you know uh, the big what do you call the regional heroes he made these fighters as well so the the idea about yvonne Durrell, there uh, there's uh there's no other there's no other comparison with him as a fighter now the biography of the fighting fisherman the life of yvonne Durrell, was published in 81 which was republished in 2005 and in 2003, Jeanette Parrain, the National Film Board of Hamilton, made a French film documentary uh, on his life called Durrell, which was insulting to uh, uh, Acadians because it was dubbed in Quebec French. What a what a what a controversial story! I had to write about that. How the Quebecers demanded that. By the way, Quebec French is not the same as Acadian French, and we saw that by the uh, 
uh, either translation. Now, he made it to the New Brunswick Sports Hall of Fame in 71, the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame in 75, and the Canadian Boxing Hall of Fame in 1989. Now, if there was an international, uh, uh, what do you call, Hall of Fame for Francophone athletes, he would be right up there. But my God, what a, what a, what a, what a tremendous, like, his fights in Moncton, he also fought in uh, Woodstock, my, my current hometown as well. So he fought everywhere. He fought in Chatham, fought at the Montreal Four, Madison Square Garden, Tampa, Florida, Edmondston, the Olympia in Detroit, uh, St. Nicholas Arena in New York, the Miami Beach Auditorium in uh, Florida, again, Frankton, the Lord Beaver Rook in St. John. Uh, he fought at the Greyhound Track in, in Clapton, London. He fought in Bermuda, fought in Nottingham uh, Ice Stadium. He fought in the uh, Herringay Arena in London. Again, Glace Bay, the Royal Albert Hall, the Sportsplatz in Schoenberg, Ber Berlin. Uh, you know, um, various, uh, like I said, various records. And also the old Sinclair Arena in Newcastle, the Victoria Pavilion in Calgary. Like, he was everywhere, like Memorial Rink in Stullerton. Uh, and again, all over at Yarmouth. He fought in Yarmouth. Fought in Batters as well. If, if you don't know North Shore, that's a, a great plays for boxing, fought his hometown of Bay St. Anne, a couple of fights, fought in Trackety. So, I mean, he he ruled, but his first title that a lot of people remember was the uh, New Brunswick middleweight title, then won Eastern Canadian middleweight, then Canadian middleweight, then the Maritime Light Heavyweight title, then the Canadian Light Heavyweight title. And I've seen some of these belts close up, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And, of course, he won the, the Commonwealth title. Uh, and he did... Uh, the loss uh, for uh, the World Heavyweight title was also uh, for the uh, New York State uh, Championships and NBA Championships, uh, uh, National Boxing Alliance. And again, the only title he didn't win was a Canadian one. But he was always better at 175 pounds to 181. He, uh, anything past 189, he was losing in power. Oh, by the way, uh, he fought also with Caribou and Brewer, Brewer Maine as well. So again, all over the place in Tree Rivers and Mo Ming Yi. So, you know, he fought in every major boxing center in Maine and New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, worldwide. And my God, what a what a career! Have have gloves will travel, as we say. But uh, George Chavallo, who's not feeling too well in recent years, can tell you there's only uh, ten boxers in Canadian boxing history are on that ultimate list, and Darrell is definitely top five. So that's the story of my uh, uh, my appreciation, my coverage, and my celebration of my old pal, God bless his soul, Yvonne Durrell. If you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, or subscribe. And in the words of Yvonne Durrell, you got to keep punching. Have a good day. Bye.